Hey, what's up guys? Hardleg Joe here with your weekly What A Deck Profile. This week we're looking at Ancient Gear OTK. Our monster lineup consists of one Winged Dragon of Ra Sphere Mode, and a bunch of Ancient Gears. We've got one Reactor Dragon, three Golem, three Golem Dash Ultimate Pound, three Wyvern, three Frame, three Box, and three Hunting Hound. For spells, we have three Overload Fusion, three Ancient Gear Catapult, three Ancient Gear Fusion, two Terraforming, three Twin Twisters, three Ancient Gear Fortress, two Mound of the Bound Creator, and one Gear Town. Our extra deck consists of two each of Ancient Gear Chaos Giant, Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem, Ancient Gear Megaton Golem, Ancient Gear Howitzer, in addition to one each of Utopia the Lightning, Utopia, Crooked Cook, Baguska, Castell, Clifford Genius, and Akashic Magician. The side deck I'll come back to in a bit. So while I call this an OTK deck, it would probably be more accurate to call it a really, really strong beatdown deck, but that doesn't fit well into the title. Uh, it doesn't have one win condition combo that will always generate 8,000 damage. Rather, it's a toolbox of just massive beat sticks that are just so good at piling on damage that they often finish the opponent in one turn. The main culprit in that regard is Chaos Ancient Gear Giant. It's got 4,500 attack, is unaffected by all spell trap effects, does piercing damage, can attack every monster your opponent controls once each, and your opponent's monster's effects cannot activate in the battle phase. If you can summon this thing while your opponent has three or four monsters on the field, it's usually game. Uh, at least you want to make sure it is, because while this thing has a lot of protection, it is still affected by monster effects in the main phase. So if you leave this out, if you don't OTK your opponent with it, they will likely find some way to get rid of it. A good alternative to this, if you're afraid of retaliation or just if your opponent has fewer monsters on the field, is Ancient Gear Megaton Golem. It has 3300 attack, prevents your opponents from activating spell traps when it attacks, and if you fusion summon it using two or three Ancient Gear Golems or Ultimate Pounds, then you can attack two or three times respectively, which can enable OTKs on its own against fields with one or no monsters on it. And even if you can't OTK, this thing's usually better to leave out on your opponent's turn. While it has less direct protection than Chaos Giant, it makes up for that by floating. If it leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can special summon one ultimate Ancient Gear Golem from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Which itself is a 4500 attacker that does piercing, stops your opponent from activating spell traps when it attacks, and... If it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can summon an Ancient Gear Golem from your graveyard, not from the deck, unfortunately. Uh, speaking of Ancient Gear Golem, though, it's got essentially the same effect. It doesn't float, but it's a 3,000 beater that does piercing and prevents your opponents from activating spell traps when it attacks. While it can't OTK on its own, it does have a new retrain version that can, Ancient Gear Ultimate Pound. Uh, in addition to doing piercing damage, it has the effect that up to twice per turn, if it attacks and destroys a monster by battle, you can discard a machine monster to let it attack again, which can occasionally lead to OTKs, or if nothing else, just massive amounts of damage. It also has an effect that you could search out polymerization and an ancient gear if it's destroyed, but we aren't playing polymerization, so you can't use that effect, sadly. But anyway, these five monsters are your main hitters in the deck. Almost everything else here is just to summon these out as quickly as possible. Uh, all our fusions are pretty generic. Uh, Giant takes any four ancient gears. Ultimate Golem is a Golem plus any two ancient gears. And Megaton is any three ancient gears. Though obviously, if you use one of the Golems, then it gets more attack, so it's better. So, really all you need to summon these is a card that fusion summons, and as many Ancient Gears monsters as possible, preferably golems. And most of our cards help out with that in one way or another. Uh, Wyvern lets you add an Ancient Gear card except itself from your deck to your hand, when it's ever it's normal or special summoned, though you can't set for the rest of the turn. Uh, Frame lets you discard a card once per turn to add an Ancient Gear golem, or a spell trap that mentions it from your deck to your hand. Uh, the only spell trap we have that mentions Ancient Gear Golem is Ancient Gear Fusion, 
This acts identically to polymerization, just with a few added benefits. Most notably that you can search it with Wyvern and Frame. Uh, also, if you happen to have either of the golems on your side of the field, then when you fusion summon with them, you can use the other materials from your deck, which is a, a nice bonus that rarely happens. Ancient Gear Box, if it's added from the deck or the graveyard to your hand by a card effect, you can search an additional Earth Machine-type monster with 500 attack or defense, except itself. Basically, if you search this with Wyvern, you can also add Frame, because it's an Earth Machine with 500 defense. So, two monsters for one search. A Hunting Hound does 600 burn damage when it's normal summoned, and more importantly, once per turn, you can fusion summon an Ancient Gear using monsters in your hand or field. So it's just another way to fusion. Uh, we also have a third way to fusion in the form of Overload Fusion, which lets you summon by banishing the materials from your field or the graveyard, though it can only summon Dark Machines, which means you're limited to Chaos Giant. Ancient Gear Fortress mostly provides protection. Uh, not only does it make it so your Ancient Gear monsters can't be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects during the turn they are summoned, but it prevents your opponent from chaining effects in response to Ancient Gear cards, meaning you can activate Ancient Gear, Fusion, or Hound without the worry of them being negated. On top of all that, it can also help with getting more Ancient Gears on the field. It allows you to summon one Ancient Gear from your hand or graveyard when it's destroyed by a card effect. Likewise, Gear Town, in addition to letting you tribute Ancient Gears for one less tribute, special summons an Ancient Gear from your hand, deck, or graveyard whenever it's destroyed by a card effect. Uh, both of these can be used in combination with our Twin Twisters, which is just the main spell trap removal we're using, as well as Ancient Gear Catapult. This card states, while you control no monsters, you can target one face-up card you control, destroy it, and if you do, Special Summon 1 Ancient Gear from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. So not only does this allow you to summon both of your Ancient Gear Golems from the deck, since they can't be Special Summoned normally, but using it on a Gear Town or Fortress allows you to summon that additional monster and get extra value of it. In addition, once this is in the graveyard, you can banish it from the graveyard to destroy one face-up card you control and Special Summon a 0-0 Ancient Gear token to your side of the field again allowing you to activate the effects of your spell traps while putting potential fusion material on the field. This thing is also the main enabler for our two spicy tech cards, the less spicy of which is Ancient Gear Reactor Dragon, another 3000 attacker that does piercing, steamrolls over spell traps, and it has the additional effect that if it attacks at the end of the damage step, you can destroy a spell trap on the field, either one of yours to activate your effects or just your opponents to get rid of it. There's no benefit to using this as fusion material, and we don't run enough stuff to tribute it, so I just play the one, you can summon it off of Gear Town or off of Catapult, if you need the extra damage or the extra spell trap destruction. Our far more spicy tech is Ra Sphere Mode, which, if you don't know, is a card that you can normal summon to your opponent's side of the field by tributing three of their monsters. It can't be targeted for attacks or by card effects, so there's no synergy with uh, Chaos Giant, unfortunately, you can't attack into it. But it's got zero attack and defense, and it comes back to your side of the field at the end of your opponent's turn. So it's nearly useless aside being able to be used as link material, and if they can't use it as link material, then you get it. Just a great way to break otherwise unbreakable boards. The reason this is here and at 1 is because of Mound of the Bound Creator. This is a field spell that says level 10 or higher monsters on the field can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects. If a level 10 or higher monster destroys a monster by battle, its controller takes a thousand damage, and when this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can add one divine monster from your deck to your hand, which includes the divine beast Ra Sphere Mode. So not only is there some synergy in that you can search this by using your catapult or your twin twisters on this thing to get a little extra value of it, but the first part actually has some synergy with Chaos Giant. Because he's level 10, it can protect him during your opponent's turn, and it can do that extra battle damage. That's why we play two of these in just one Gear Town. This is slightly more useful, not just for being destroyed, but also for protecting your things. Plus we have the two terraforming, so you can search out whichever you prefer for whatever situation you need. All that leaves, then, is the rest of the extra deck, most of which is just a toolbox. The Ixies and the Links barely get used. Fill them in with whatever you like. The only important thing in here is our last Ancient Gear fusion, which is Howitzer. 
This can be made with any two ancient gears, has insignificant attack and defense values, but is completely unaffected by all other cards' effects. Uh, it can also inflict a thousand damage to your opponent once per turn, and if it's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can summon one ancient gear monster from your deck, again ignoring summoning conditions. This is your main backup plan if you don't have enough to OTK, you can sit on this. Uh, aside from kaijus, the only way to get rid of this thing is by attacking over it, and when your opponent does, you can either summon one of your 3k beaters, or you can summon a wyvern and then search box, which searches frame, which sets you up really nicely to be able to retaliate next turn. And that's pretty much it for the deck. All that's left is the side deck. Uh, your sphere mode and your mound of the bound and your twin twisters, these are your key side targets. If you're taking anything out, it's those. Especially going second, if your opponent knows that you're playing this, they probably won't keep monsters on the field. You could switch it out for trade-ins, just to give a little bit of extra draw power, as well as tune Ancient Gear Golem, which counts as an Ancient Gear monster, and it's another level 8, so your chances of being able to draw are higher. You can also put in more Gear Towns instead of your Mounds of the Bound, um, along with maybe another Reactor Dragon. If you just want to focus on trying to swarm faster, Quaking Mirror Force, I'd recommend, if they're, they're going to make you go first. Not only will people not be expecting traps in an OTK deck, but flipping everything face down opens up for OTKs, with uh, Chaos Max being able to attack everything and do piercing damage. Ancient Gear Reborn is also good, especially if you're going against something either that's more stally or something that has a bunch of Kaijus, since it lets you bring back your Howitzer and your, your Megaton, uh, in the cases where they get removed by stuff that they can't float into. And of course, if you are going up against a Swarm deck, and you really want to see that Sphere Mode, another copy of that, another copy of Mound of the Bound, can be really good to increase your odds of drawing it. But anyway, that's it for this week's deck. As always, if you'd like to see it in action, you can watch the main video. I play 10 duels against random opponents on YGO Pro. There's a link in the description and on the end page if you want to check that out. And until next week, good luck and have fun. <laughs>